In today's video, we're going to be using artificial intelligence and automation softwares to automatically extract data. Specifically, in this context, I got requested by a taxi company on how to extract data from an image of a license. So in this video, we're going to learn how to extract data from any type of image. We're going to go ahead and leverage Zapier as the automation software. and We'll be using OpenAI as our artificial intelligence. Let's go ahead and jump in today's video. Welcome back y'all. In today's video, we're going to be learning how to extract data in emails. This can be applied to any other type of context, specifically when extracting data from PDFs or image based files. Now you might be asking yourself, Corbin, how would you get this extremely niche use case for a driver's license? And that comes down to web cafe software. If you come to this site, if you go to any of the pages, so we'll just, for example, go to packages and you scroll down here. If you have a specific automation you want done, simply request the automation. Click it, fill out this Google form, and as we keep going here, I'm gonna just slowly push out videos that go over these different automations that different businesses are requesting. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave a link to this down below. It's gonna be AI services, webcafecafter.com. Check it out. An example of me doing this past is a 43 minute video talking about how to automate your onboarding process. This went over six different tasks that were traditionally done manually and completely automated them. Let's learn how to do today's video. The way we're structuring today's video is we're going to be assuming that an individual had filled out a form and attached their driver's license through email. So let's go and begin, we're gonna hit create zap. Obviously you can mix and match, use the blocks how you wanna use them. In this context, we'll just say the trigger is a new email. I'm gonna go over to Gmail here. Corbin, I connected my Gmail, it's not working. You need to have a workspace account, $7 USD. Alternatively, if you use Outlook, this will work as well. So just connect your Outlook. I'm gonna go ahead and choose an event here. And you have a couple of different options here when it comes to how to identify said email. A really good video that shows you how to identify emails using AI, but also alternatively filter method is this video right here. So check that out if you want further information on to make sure that we're not getting triggered for every type of email. This one, we're just gonna assume that within the email itself, the title will say like application, new email matching search, continue. Choose the relevant Gmail, continue. And the search string, we'll go ahead and add a little bit extra pizzazz here. We're gonna say the subject line. So we're gonna use this little bit of dictation. This is important as this identifies that it, if this shows up in the subject line, everything else gets triggered. So we'll just say application. As of now, I have nothing sent to this specific email. So I'm gonna go ahead and send a dummy email for dummy data. Went ahead and set a dummy email for my corporate account here to my training account. If I click it, for now, this is purely just for use case and data. We're gonna assume that you'll have obviously additional information within the body here, but then we get the attached driver's license. Now, the way you get access to this driver's license can be alternative methods. You may use a different form submission when it comes to analyzing the data you receive, whether it's a form submission, a different software, whatever it may be, the tech I'm about to show you right now can still be applied. Okay, Alexander, let's get your data. I'm gonna continue here, and there we go. So we got the body that I sent earlier, and we should have the attached image as well. So I'm gonna hit continue. Now that we have a selected record here, we can actually start leveraging OpenAI right away. So I'm gonna use ChatGPT. While using ChatGPT, we're gonna do an event of analyze image content with vision. Now, here's a big one, y'all. If you really wanna get this lasered in where it knows exactly your context, it knows what it's looking for, you don't have to proctor as much, I implore you to use Assistance API. Assistance API allows us to preload an entire chat bot with context and data so it knows how to operate in these kind of automation flows. Now I've done a ton of videos when it comes to Assistance API, ChatGPT, and Zapier, so you could probably just type Corbin Brown Assistance API. On top of that, I'll go ahead and make sure I leave a relevant Assistance API video you can check out yourself that is trained on your business data so you can use it in whatever your operation may be. That kind of sounded like a promo ad. That's not a promo ad. That's just like me telling you a good good option in this context. But for this one, we'll just say analyze content, image content for vision. Ready to continue. We're gonna choose our account, continue again. And here we go. So really simple, y'all. So this is actually, I mean, back in the day, this would have been a big deal. But now with AI and all its new features, it's becoming really simple to do this kind of stuff. So we're gonna add our image. I'm gonna simply type in JPEG here. But don't worry, anytime you do this, you're gonna be able to find it anyways. And because I do all my videos live, I may need to do some formatting, restructuring, and get the correct image file. But for now, let's go see if this works. I'm gonna do attachment, one file name. Let's just go ahead and see if it works. We're gonna say extract the name on the driver's license. I'm just testing if this is the correct way to access said image file. Continue test step. And there you go. This is all live and that is not the correct way to access the image. So let's find out how. Second time is a charm. So what you need to do with this action is we're gonna actually use all attachments exist but not shown. Typically in Zapier when it can't show the data or use those parentheses. You notice this as well with file IDs and Google Docs and there's ways to go about this and I've done videos on this in the past. As of now though, this is how we're gonna extract the relevant information. So now that we have confirmed and just to confirm to y'all, coming down here to use the output, 
I'm going to drag this over here. And now that we've confirmed, we can actually look at the image. Let's go ahead and structure a prompt that's going to work at scale. Context. We received a driver's license. Extract the following information in this format. Name, semicolon. Date of birth, semicolon. Expiry, semicolon. DL, semicolon. And the list goes on. So whatever seems relevant here that you'd want to add addition, height, weight, sex, hair, eyes, everything. From here, let's go and see the structured output here. When it comes to tokens, if you're having issues, raise it. Right now, 250 seems a little bit low. Oh, <laughs> don't want to add that. 250 seems a little low. Typically, I like starting at 500. And we're going to hit continue. Retest this step. Also, if you're having issues with outputs, that's where Assistance API comes in when dealing with making sure it's consistent. My first output actually didn't work. And what I realized is that sometimes with ChatGPT, you need to be very specific so it understands what you're looking for. So I added, because we already added the context that we received the driver's license, when asking for the name, DLB, AXP, DL, add the term drivers to it. So if you ever run into issues, specify a little bit further for variables that are requested. But from this output, we got our relevant information. Let's check it out. So obviously it messed up a little because it has sample here, but we got Alexander Joseph, Alexander Joseph. We got a date of birth of 8-31-1977, 8-31-1977. We got a driver's expiration of 8-31-2024. 2014, 831-2014. And finally, the DL, which is D1-12-34562. That's not correct. Let's see why. Because that's not correct, let's go ahead and specify a little bit further here. So we're going to say account, actions, drivers, license, number. See if that's sufficient enough. Continue, test up. And there we go. So we got a pretty solid output here. Driver's name, DOB, EXP, and the license number. Let's go ahead and proceed to the next step here where we're going to format this data so we can actually extract it and push it to wherever. To do so, we're going to add another step here. And this is going to be a formatter by Zapier. Now, what's great about Zapier recently is that they made it so all these like formatting steps or Zapier specific steps don't actually cost you money. These are just laissez-faire, free to use. To be fair, it's all just code. So it makes sense. For us, we're going to do text, continue, transform. We're going to split it. We're going to split text. Our input is going to be the output here, which is going to be the image analysis. From here, we're going to do a separator, which based off what we've seen is we're structuring output, which is off new line. Corbin, how'd you come to new line? Click this link. It's a little help article. You can use it however you will. For us, we're going to do new line here. Separator, new line, and segment index. This is very important. We're going to choose all as separate fields. This is going to allow us to choose basically whatever data point we want. So we test this step. Alternatively, if we try to use this data elsewhere, it's gonna be like all one big block, which we don't want. So for this example, real quick, we'll just assume we're using Zapier tables. You could use Google Sheets. You could use Microsoft Excel. Let's say create a record, OTEC hire. This is from that hiring video I showed earlier. Instead of using OTEC hire, as I realized, we actually need to provide the correct columns for the data we're providing. We're just gonna create a new table here. This could be a Google Sheet. This could be Excel as well. Let's say blank table here. And we're gonna say, uh, data extract, create table. Now within this table, we're gonna go ahead and just add our fields. So we'll go start DL, name, DOB, and we'll add one extra field here, which will be EXP, add experience. All right, great, here we go. Coming back to our tables here, let's go ahead and choose the correct table. So not OTEC hire, data extract, and here we go. So what's perfect is because of the fact that we used the formatter block previously, we can make sure that there's no issue here. So we just did this, for example, we would have it all as one block. So we couldn't separate the data, which obviously is not really that efficient. Now that we have the formatter block though, we can just put in the relevant information here. So we can do the DL license number, the name, there we go, DOB, and finally the EXP. With all this information, we hit continue here, test this step, and this should all be pushed to our table here. Boom, that was good timing. Now, one thing you might be saying to yourself is, Corbin, this is good, but I don't like the driver license number, driver's name, Driver's DOB, driver's EXP. I don't want to, I don't want to actually use the name real quick. Let me show you a real quick trick using 3.5. Specifically in the context, we're gonna be using chat GPT 3.5. We'll add a new block here. If you feel like you learned something at this point, make sure you live like it's completely free. Maybe I gotta do one of those car salesmen was like twenty thousand dollars here, twenty five thousand dollars here. Cause sometimes people say I speak too fast. Use 0.75 speed, chat GBT. We're gonna do an event of conversation. We'll go ahead and choose GBT 3.5 Turbo, the cheapest model as of now within GBT's ecosystem. Well, there's cheaper, but they're not as good. We're going to use our user message here. We're going to say, based on this data, remove all text before. I have no clue this is going to work. This might work. We'll see. As I said before, this is all live. So we'll go ahead and do this. We're going to do data one. 
and then kind of proceed in this manner. So the two. Now, mind you, this step would have to basically, here's the more effective way to do this step, actually. Let me move this up one block. Boom. Move step. And we're just going to do data. We're going to do that original block here so we don't have to add extra work here. So we're going to do data. Image analysis. This was our original data block. Then we use the formatter. But for now, we're just going to go ahead and remove that information that we don't like. And I'm going to do semicolons here because that's how you specify data points within prompts. And add a memory key. Consistent outputs at scale. Continue and test step. So this should remove this, 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 and this test step. And it didn't work. <laughs> so let's go ahead and use a higher model here. Typically, if we could probably keep prompting this, but to make my life easier, we'll use a higher model. Using something like GBT4 Turbo is always a good bet. It's the most comprehensive model in the market right now. We hit test step again. There we go. So we got our output here. And we do notice that this is still in the reply, which I don't like. So coming over here, I can just say, Generate just the data, no text before, after. This is a very, very famous line of mine. I've used this for the last two years and it's been very reliable. Refresh the memory key, add a one, new slot, retest that. And we got a perfect output. So using this output, we can go ahead and grab that information, put it through the text formatter again. Instead of image analysis, we'll be using the conversation here, the reply, continue. And instead of that, we get this. There we go, y'all. We have successfully together created a automation flow that allows us to extract data. This specific context was a driver's license for the taxi company that made that request at webcafesoftware.com. So if you want to make a request, check out the website description down below. If you feel like you learned something, make sure you leave a like. It's completely free. And I'll see you in the next video. This video right here is automating your entire hiring process. 43 minutes long. You'll learn a ton of stuff that maybe you can use in other parts of your business. That's a random video. That's my face. And I'll see you in the next video.